Let's have a look at the structure of the database for this project, which is also known as database schema. Before that, we can have a look at some of the terminologies that we'll use to describe different parts of the car parking application to avoid any confusion. So first we'll have the parking area, which will refer to a large designated space where multiple vehicles can be parked. It can be an open field, a multi-story building or a specific zone within a large complex. So it's the entire parking space around maybe a shopping mall. Then we'll also use a terminology like parking floor. This is a specific level within a multi-story parking structure. Multi-story parking areas are divided into floors to maximize space vertically. For, so for example, we may have the second floor of a parking garage. Next, we'll have a parking lot, which is a smaller section within the parking area, which could be designated for specific types of vehicles or users. For example, a lot reserved for employee parking within the large park, larger parking area of a corporate office. And lastly, we'll have a parking slot, which is an individual space where a single vehicle can be parked. It's the smallest unit in the hierarchy of parking management, so we can have something like slot number 45 on the third floor of a parking garage. Great, so imagine a large shopping mall with a parking facility. So the parking area will be the entire parking facility of the mall, including all floors and lots. The parking floor can be one of the levels within the multi-story parking garage. The parking lot can be a designated section of the parking area, like a lot reserved for VIP customers maybe. And lastly, the parking slot would be the individual space within the parking lot where the cars are parked, like slot number 30, 23 in lot A on the second floor. Great, so with that out, let's look at the structure of the database. Note. Superbase uses Postgres, so if you're not familiar with some of the data types used, I'll leave a link down below for further reading. So our database schema looks something like this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tables. So let me expand them, expand so that you can be able to view this. So we'll start with the profile table. The profile table will hold information, user information. So please take note that in this tutorial, we're just looking at the Superbase database only. And in terms of authentication, that will be a separate uh, tutorial. We just want to expound and explore as much as we can about the database itself. So we just have a simple profile table that will just record uh, information about the user, which is the name, the phone number, and the email address. Then we're going to proceed to have a table that will hold information about the vehicles of the users. So we'll have a foreign key called user ID that will connect or create a relationship between the profile table and the vehicle table. And then we'll have extra information about the car, which is the car model, the car number, and the car color. Great. Then we also have the parking area, which is a very important factor. So it will have a list of parking areas together with the name, the parking fee, the location where it is, the rating, and also some images about the parking area, and the location description and amenities. Then we proceed to have the parking detail. Parking detail mainly means the booking information of a specific user. That's why we have the user ID here at the bottom that links, creates a relationship between the parking detail table and the profile table. So we'll get to have the parking date when the user is booking for a parking and the entry time, the duration, the exit time. And also we'll get to link the parking detail table with the parking area table using the parking area ID. We, through this ID, we'll get to know the information about the parking, the parking area that the user wants to book and also the status. And we'll also have a parking lot, which will hold the specific floor and the specific parking area um, information. We'll also have the parking slot. The parking slot will hold the name of the slot. Remember, we talked about maybe slot number 45. We need that information to be able to store in the, to display in the app. Also showing the availability. Is it available for parking or not? And there'll be a relationship between the parking slot and the parking lot table. And then we'll, we'll also have the parking floor, which will hold the name of the parking floor itself. Is it underground? Is it basement? Is it first floor and second floor and the like? We'll need this information to be able to display in the app. 
So you'll find we'll have a parking area. In the parking area, we have parking lot. And for the parking lot, we'll have a parking floor. And inside the parking floor, we'll have different parking slots. So that's how the relationship between these four come in. If you haven't understood the terminologies, again, you can just rewind back where I've defined the terminologies of parking area, parking lot, parking floor, and parking slot. And lastly, we do have one table called favorite. We'll just hold the favorite parking areas of a specific user. And if you'll have a relationship, there'll be a relationship between the favorite table and the profile table using the user ID. I hope that makes sense. Something to note, Superbase allows you to specify your type of schema. Let's have a look at schemas. By default, the public schema is used in PostgreSQL when you set up a table for the first time. This automatically exposes a schema to the data APIs. So what are data APIs? Data APIs are interfaces that allow software applications to communicate and exchange data over the internet. In our case, Superbase provides provides those data APIs that are automatically generated for us that enable us to connect and communicate the Superbase Postgres database that we have created. So Superbase provides three types of data APIs. We have REST, which interacts with your database through a REST interface. We have GraphQL, which interacts with your database through a GraphQL interface. And we have Realtime, which listens to database changes over WebSockets. So in this tutorial, we'll interact with REST. So back to our Superbase dashboard, you can set the type of schema on the table editor right over here. There's a drop down, So you can, you can see that our public uh, schema is the default schema that we have on Superbase. And you can also proceed to define your own custom schema by clicking on create a new schema. And it will allow you to define a name of your new schema over here. So we'll divide our DB our database into two schemas. So we'll have the public one, which is already at the default schema. And then it will contain, uh, back to our schema, we, it will contain the profile table, the vehicle table, and the favorite table. And then we can now create a new schema or our own custom schema and call it parking. And this will and click on save. So if we proceed back to the schemas, we'll get we need we'll be able to see our schema parking. And in this parking schema, we're going to have uh, the rest of our tables, which is the parking detail, the parking area, the parking lot, the parking slot, and the parking floor. So you may be asking, why would you have multiple schemas in the database? Here are a few benefits. So the first one will be logical separation. What that means is different schemas can help organize data related to different aspects of the application. Just as we have done in our case where we have created two separate schemas, one for user data and the other one for parking information. Also, schemas can provide an extra layer of security by restricting access to specific data. For instance, only the finance team might have access to the billing schema, while the customer service team have access to the user and parking information schemas. Also, it eases in development in that different teams can work on different schemas without interfering with each other's data. This can streamline the development process and reduce the risk of conflicting. Furthermore, schemas can be used to separate different environments like development, testing, production within the same database. This makes it easier to manage and deploy changes. And lastly, we have multiple schemas help avoid naming conflicts by for providing separate namespaces. This is particularly useful in large applications where table and object names might overlap. Now that we have that, we can, we'll get to see how to interact now with our two different schemas in the flat application later.